Very good afternoon. Uh, our guest is uh, my grandmaster, most worshipful brother, Luis Baez Delgado, grandmaster of the American Canadian Grand Lodge within the United Grand Lodges of Germany. Many thanks, Luis, for being with us, for spending your time and sharing your Masonic knowledge. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Thank you. The honor is mine. So, dear brother Claudio, uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the invitation to the Masonic Forum. Thank you for what you do regarding uh, Masonry uh, work, and greetings from all your brothers in Germany. Thank you so much. I'm honored. I would like to introduce our audience to the Masonic life in the American Canadian Grand Lodge. How many Masons and Lodges, if there are lodges in another in other languages, in Spanish, Turkish, what dependent bodies, uh, ancient and accepted Scottish rite, shrine, York rite, and so on. The floor is yours, yes. most worship brother. Great. But the American Canadian Grand Lodge consists of uh, 46 lodges, and we are one of five Grand Lodges within the United Grand Lodges of Germany, as you mentioned. Uh, since 2014 to today, the, the ACGL have made remarkable transformation from its early days as a military Grand Lodge. That's how we started. With the United States military bases closing down, um, the number of US military uh, service members, contractors, uh, dwindled to around 35,220 today. Presently, we have uh, around 2,445 members. Uh, as other Grand Lodges, we had difficulties from uh, 2019 to the end of 2021 during COVID-19. Uh, one good thing during Corona, we had uh, online meetings, we stay connected, we opened the doors for our members throughout the world to join, since that was a, a way of connecting everyone that was at home or working from home. Uh, since September of 2021, uh, we carefully reopened our lodges uh, for fiscal meetings and gatherings. And also a point uh, that the ACGL is celebrating 60 years of brotherhood this year uh, and Masonic life in Germany is great. To your question about dependent bodies, we do have members in the American Military Scottish Rite, the AMSRB NATO Club, uh, Valley of Washington, Orient of uh, District of Columbia. Um, they hold regular meetings, participating in honoring outstanding GROTC students in American high schools in England, Germany, and Italy. And then Master Masons that are serving in the military as well as U.S. passport holders, either military or civilians within Europe, uh, can become a member of the AMSRB club. Uh, we have around 135 members in the Emirates Shrines International. Emirates Shriners facilitate transportation to seriously ill children from Europe and the Middle East to the Shriners hospitals in the United States. Emirates meets around four times a year, conduct two ceremonials, and uh, they do have 17 shrine uh, clubs within Europe. Uh, for many years, we, we come together as at the ACGL annual communication, as you participated in the past, uh, where Emirates Shriners and Scottish Rites honor us by escorting and carrying the flags. And we are in very good working relationship. Uh, we also have members in the Mark Masons and the York Rites uh, within Germany and England. Mm -hmm. In which foreign countries does have lodges the American Canadian Grand Lodge? I can tell you that uh, we have lodges in France. Uh, there are nine, nine lodges in France uh, specifically, uh, and they just celebrated the 10 year uh, anniversary in July of this year. And the SCGL uh, made a remarkable transform transformation from its early days as military Grand Lodge. As I stated before, uh, with the United States military bases closing in Germany, uh, the existence of the Grand Lodge uh, was under threat. But we became the de facto Grand Lodge 
for non-Germans to practice Freemasonry with their own rituals in their own language. Today, we have lodges uh, practicing Freemasonry in English, French, Turkey, and Italian uh, with different rituals in addition to the American ritual. Many members are non-resident members who were members during their rotation in Germany and kept their membership while back in the United States. But most of the resident members are non-military personnel today. Luis, tell me about your motto as Grand Master. <laughs> why um, do you choose my that? motto, my motto for this year is part upon the square. And uh, why did I chose that? Is because as after two years of COVID nineteen and meeting online, we we really at, had the meetings and did great things uh, in the media, um, but when we are physically meeting uh, together, uh, we accomplish a lot and we part upon the square, usually uh, what I say. Um, and that's one of the reasons I chose uh, the motto to continue and to get him back to basics since we were two years without meeting together. So I, and I will explain some more on what are we doing uh, today uh, to, to, to get in part uh, with my motto. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The English speaking Grand Lodges are losing membership. It is the same situation in the American Canadian Grand Lodge. What kind of politics do you have for retaining membership? I will say that today's generations differ from the 1960s. Uh, many work as many hours as they can, while others work from home with no real defined hours. They never truly off work. That's today's business. They just take breaks. Uh, do not think they be, they they do things they believe on what's more important to them uh, today. And in re regards to the ACGL, we have improved our minute, meetings. Uh, business meetings have become the responsibility of the elected line. Uh, with a recap at an appropriate meeting for approval. Lodges have dressed down uh, for normal meetings, dress up during rituals, special communications, or events. And uh, we are concentrating on individual development and not on memory work. Very interesting. What are the relations of the ACGL with the authority of Germany. And one sentence can describe that. The American <laughs> Canadian Grand Lodge has no issues with the German authorities and we are in good relations. Uh -huh. Luis, from your international Masonic experience, you have noticed differences between Eastern and Western European Freemasonry between South and North America. What kind of Freemasonry do you think is closer to what Freemasonry should be? Hmm. I'll say that we are a society with members uh, that share cultures, customs, and a way of thinking. For the most part, we may be exclusively of the middle class and its most affluent and educated part. Grand Lodges are always on the move, changing and reconfiguring and experiencing their right. We are urban residents, well, with free times and socially active. This fact generates diversity and adaptability to the rituals. We are involved in history, but in need to embrace the present and future together. Today, we visit each other, interact, learn from each other, and conduct joint projects. The future is undoubtedly one of the driving forces behind the development of Freemasonry, not only in Germany, but around the world. Despite disagreements, the United Grand Lodges of England and the Great Orient of France remain the basis of the definition of Masonic identity. With regard to, free, to what Freemasonry should be, 
I will say to be the one that unites, that unites by a single ideology, but with enormous na national and regional differences. Uh, these simultaneously diverse and united communities only emphasize the vital role that Freemasonry plays around the world. Do you think that nowadays world needs Freemasonry like in the past? Freemasonry is somehow eroded. Does Freemasonry become more of a charity organization? Absolutely. And I have different parts. In recent developments around the world with the pandemic, world disasters, and especially now with the war in Ukraine, Masons have re-emphasized the principles of missionary, a helping hand, loyal support, a friendly face, and that good advice. We have a role in, continu in continuing the education and intellectual growth, insisting that learning more is more about many things as is important for anyone to become the best version of ourself as a Mason, being given and receiving, relieving and being relieved, supporting and being supported either singular or collectively. To the question about uh, is Freemasonry is eroded, I will say not at all. Uh, far from being a dead craft. Uh, from my personal observation over just the past few years, Freemasonry has displayed vibrantly, intelligently, and demonstrated that we are an engaged group of individuals. Like all social philanthropic groups since 1960, it has suffered a decline in membership, as you stated or you asked. Its societal changes are not a bad thing and not the first time for mission for free missionary we will experience a, a period of survival but there will be a number of exceptional lodges grand lodges that will stand the test of time with respect to the question of uh, charity uh i would say that our principles teach us the value of relief and charity our dedication is to strengthen a man's character, improve his moral and spiritual outlook, not to be better than others, but better than themselves. Mm -hmm. The public perception of Freemasonry has changed over time. What has led to these variations? A good Because a good public perception results in an increase in number of members. Germany is experiencing a real revival as some Grand Lodges have a waiting list for individuals to join. Mm. In conversations I hear perception is not an issue and others, uh, they have a lot to say. There is no right answer since Masonry differs, differs from country to country. Uh, we need to reboot just getting back to today's day uh, as we do and we have done with the computers and cell phones when something happens to them as, as we've done several times in the past. Modernization is something it, that it cannot be ignored and cannot be avoided. It's absolutely necessary to adapt. We need to overcome and face inner thinking of the majority of the population, which is mostly superstition and have false sense about missionary. We need to demonstrate that we are a caring society determined to help others, both within and without our organization. Open our doors to the community, show who we are and what we do. That is scheduling an open day for the community members to visit the lodge and to know what we are all about. Show that we have beliefs and standards and that we are, we try to live up to them in a, on a daily basis. We do not need to advertise in newspapers or media, but we do need to be attractive and marketable, not traditional. We need to focus on civic 
activities in the community, formulating publicity campaigns that exemplify brotherhood, honor, and friendship. For some countries, that's how we become attractive. Tell me please, what is the most difficult problem facing Freemasonry today? Freemasonry is, is represented by different countries, rituals, practice, and institutional structures of mm -hmm. various charters that are often unrelated and do not recognize each other. We are similar in structure and composition, but have not been able to communicate. We need to rethink, engage, and embrace at all levels. Focus on the quality to develop the next generation of Masonic leaders. Status quo will not hold. How surprises Pandemia, the ACGL? What lessons should be learned from the pandemic period? Interesting. Over the past two years of Pandemia, um, we had our trials and tribulations. Many of us learned how to work from home office, isolated, at sometimes caring for our families, including house chores, teaching, learning, and attending lodge, but virtually. Brothers discover a way of life and a way to stay in touch with each other, whatever we may be in the world. Meetings not as usual since we were accustomed to meet in person. Uh, we learn to meet and greet through a media source. Many attending learning sessions within, also attending Masonic teachings from other Grand Lodges around the world, as I did. We learn to deal with the situation and know how to surpass if we get into this situation again. How do you see the future of Freemasonry, Luis? It is an important challenge to us is to respect our tradition, stay faithful to our values, and at the same time appearing modern and relevant to the younger generation. For example, the language, being able to describe in simple names, terms, emphasizing the social side of our activities as well as making contribution to society. But modernizing our language doesn't mean changing our principles. They need to be mindful of the time commitment that we are asking of members, keeping up the pace of our meetings and the importance of fostering a feeling of membership. Technology needs to be adapted in the administration, connectivity, education, and rituals. Media, especially websites, they need to be attractive, friendly, with essential information. Streamline the process of entry, the business meeting, rituals and classes, as I stated before, and include the new brothers in important work in the lodge and in the community. Finally, please let us know your curriculum vitae, both Masonic and profane. Try to keep it short here. I was I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I earned a degree in mechanical and architectural designs and then enlisted in the United States Army in 1971. Uh -huh. uh, during my tenure in the military, I served in a variety of non-commissioned officers position in the United States, in Korea, Alaska, Hawaii, Latin America, Germany, Bosnia, Kosovo, Kuwait, Iraq. I'm a recipient of numerous military awards and recognition. And then I culminated my military career as an aviation task force command sergeant major, uh, retiring in September of 2004 from the military. I then joined the United States Department of Defense Civil Service Program where I serve as an aviation logistician, airfield manager, and aviation operations manager for various airfields and radar sites in Europe. Also attended several US Federal Aviation Administration courses, finally retired 
from civil service uh, in April of 2020. I am a member of various civil and military asso associations, past master of Flight of the Three Star Lodge number 963, past district deputy grandmaster, and through the ranks to grandmaster since April of this year. I am a member of the Scottish Rite 32nd Knight Commander of the Court of Honor and past assistant ribbon of every Emirate Shrine International. Splendid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, yeah. Thank you for letting me uh, introduce the American Canadian Grand Lodge and wishing you most success, success in all you do and greetings from your brothers in Germany. Thank you so much, Luis. I'm deeply honored. Thank you. Thank you.